I want to start off in this demonstration to show the float object and what it can do. So, to put in a float object, well, there's two different ways I can do it. I can go Command 1 and type in float. Uh, or, as an abbreviation, I can just go Command 1 and type in the letter F. It's the same thing, exactly the same type of object. To just show you that, I'm just going to add in two number boxes and a bang. And I'll just join out the outlet of the bang into the inlet of the floats. Now, generally what a float object does is it stores a number that gets passed to it and it passes out that number also. So I'm going to run this patch. It's not actually going to do much from the uh, uh, obviously, but I, I'm going to click this bang and you can see that nothing much is actually happening. But in fact it is. The float objects, both of them here, are storing the number zero and passing it out to the number box. But just because the number box already has zero in them, it doesn't look as if much is happening. So how do I change what number the float objects are storing and passing out? Well, there's two main ways. One way is to get into edit mode, get into one of the objects and put in an initial argument. So for instance, I could put in the number eight in this one. And the second way, and I'll just do this on the other float object, is if I go and put in a number box above here, and I attach the outlet of this number box into the right inlet of this float. And I can run this patch, change up this number here, and uh, I can click on the bang object. And let's see both of these float objects working. And so the float object on the left will output the number eight, and the float object on the right, because I've got 28 coming from this number box here into the right inlet without out, uh, put the uh, number 21 into the number box below. One particular application that these float objects are good for is to start a counter that counts up to a certain number incrementally and keeps counting. So, just to show you that, I'm going to do away with this float object and number box on the right. I'm just going to tidy this piece up over here. I'm going to remove this number box here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, an addition object, an arithmetic operator, uh, over here at the side. So a new object, and I'm going to put in the plus sign to make it a plus object, and I'm going to add one. As we've already seen, the outlet from the float object outputs the number that's stored in the float object. And so if I take the outlet from that object and bring it into the inlet of this plus one object, and then that plus one object, it will add one to whatever number is coming in and pass that number out. But as we've already seen, if I pass a number into the right inlet of the float object, then that is the number that the float object stores and passes out. So if I run that patch and I click on the bang operator, let's watch the number. So as you can see, it's counting up the whole time. So float has 27 stored in it. Next time I click, it passes through the plus one and it adds one to the number every time. And then lastly, just one variation on that idea. Instead of actually counting upwards to infinity the whole way, uh, if I just look at a sequence of numbers, say from zero to four, or one, two, three, four, and back to one, two, three, four, over and over and over again. Now, how would I want to do that? Well, I can use the modulus operator. And just over at the side here, I'm going to demo what the modulus operator does before I add it into these objects over here. So I'm going to add in a number box, and I'm going to add in an object. And the symbol for modulus is the percentage sign. And as an initial argument there, I'm going to put in the number four. Now, what that modulus operator will do is whatever number is passed into it, it will divide it by the number 4, and any remainder after that division sum, it will pass it out through the outlet. So let's see that happening. So for instance, I'm going to just uh, drag an outlet here from the number box into the inlet of the modulus, and out the other side, I'm going to put in another number box as well, so I can see the output of the modulus object. So for instance, if I start up at the number 7, for instance, so I'll just quickly put this into run and drag this number box up to 7. I can see the result that's coming out here in the number box. 
So 7 divided by 4 goes once with 3 left over. Modulus outputs the number 3. If I bring it up to 13, so 4 goes into 13, it goes 3 times, but 1 left over, and it outputs now number 1. So modulus always just takes the remainder, and that's what it outputs. Now that I know what the modulus does, I can bring that in to the rest of my patch over here. So I'm going to get rid of these two number boxes. I'm going to leave it divided by 4. I'll pull this number box down here and just change this link and connect it up again. Now, what I should be left with here, because the float object keeps on counting up over and over again when I click on the bang, I should be left with a counter that will just bring me four values, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, over and over again as long as that float object keeps on receiving a bang.